So we're trying a, a, an idea here. Thought about making a motorcycle, bicycle motorcycle, sidecar. So I have a canoe here, and when I was looking at them online, the sidecars, they kind of look like an upside down canoe, some of them. So I put some parchment paper underneath the fiberglass I have laid on, on top. And uh, I've gone over it with what I had in resin, and then I had to go get some more. And this side acts like it's going to come off pretty easy, but I think it needs another layer of fiberglass. So we're going to have sanded where I'm going to run into uh, where I stopped prior. So we're going to mix some of that up and finish the first layer of resin out, and then I will do another layer for sure, but I'm probably going to try and pull it off of there and just kind of see what we've got. So uh, I guess I'll just set you up here and see what we can get. Hopefully this works. If this works, it'd be super cool, uh, super easy to do. Just mix up some resin and So, I'll probably be back on when I'm ready to go. Now, 40 drops of this, I guess. Don't mess me up counting. Actually, gonna go get a. Uh, yeah, I'll be cutting that out though for the cockpit, so I don't have to worry about that. Got a few little wrinkles. Technique-wise, learning experience. Didn't get the fiberglass attached down well enough, and I worked the wrong direction probably. So, ordinarily, I'd be very, very happy for high winds because that would be a good sail day. Today, they're just kind of making me angry not a sail day for me. I'm stuck here messing with something that the wind kind of affects how well it goes on. And again, this this isn't going to hold any weight. It's just to kind of give it some form. You can make a sidecar without having any front at all if you want to. Um, just to give it some shape, some form. And I'm going to make it snap to the bottom frame of the actual platform I make it sit on so that it can be removed. So I really don't want it super, super stiff. Uh, at least that's my plan. The snap thing is my plan. I would like to be able to tweak it and modify it if need be. So I thought maybe I could have it removed. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Learning experience, anyway, right? I'm probably never get that tape off of there now. There I did learn that it, it it pays to kind of move from the front of the boat to the back of the boat to get the right form to get this stuff to kind of take the, the form of the boat right. Nice thing about this fiberglass mesh is it does work really well on a surface that's not perfectly square, so. off and uh, I'll work you around and show you. <clears throat> so we got everything pretty well coated. 
uh, with at least one coat of fiberglass resin and I've gone back and taken off some of those high points that I had. I got one little ripple right here that was underneath in the wax paper and of course this is going to be the side that's exposed because I'm planning on putting this on the non-driving side of the bike but uh, I've gone back and taken off some of the um, rougher points and it's it's pretty stable. I mean it's the edges I didn't worry about too much, but I mean it's it's got some pretty good stability to it. I'm gonna put one more coat of resin on it, and one more coat of glass uh, fabric, and then probably two coats of resin on top of that, and call it good. I want some flexibility in it, um, but I do want the nose cone to be pretty solid. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple more coats, and uh, we'll cut out. We'll make a pattern, and we'll cut out. Uh, this area here, so I need to make sure that this rib general area is uh, a little stronger than it is, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more coats. In fact, I may put a couple of extra pieces of fabric right here, because underneath I'm going to have to put a sidewall in. I need something to kind of attach it to. So that's where we're at. A couple of my... I did take off all of the wax paper on the inside. That worked like a charm. It came off it was really easy. Um, but a couple of my uh, pieces of tape did get encased and caused a couple little flaw issues so maybe don't use blue painters tape if you decide to do it the way I did because apparently the resin goes through uh, the tape didn't go through the wax paper the wax paper worked really well this one actually is uh, between I did two layers of fiberglass up here so that one's actually between the two layers this one is too to hold it down because it was so windy. So it's going to be painted, it won't matter. And I figure if it causes a condition issue later on, we'll just cut those pieces out and refiber glass over it. So that's where we're at. And uh, turn you back on once we get a little bit further. All right, so we've got our, our shell cut out here. Pick that up. So it's it's actually pretty stout. Uh, I'm going to cut it flush. So I've drawn myself a line here and on the other side and actually I, I, I barely made it. Uh, so I'll have to put something over the edges of course. And then for some reason over here I'm about an inch shy off my line. So we're going to lose a little bit less than what I, or a little bit more than what I originally planned. So I've kind of just drawn on what I'm going to cut out for the cockpit. I uh, drew a couple different lines on there, and that's the one I kind of settled on. Uh, I sat down on the ground and imagined if I were sitting there, my feet would be at the end. So a quote unquote adult sized person could sit in there. Uh, I'm pretty short though. And then being that I'm an inch short over there, I'm going to lose at least that much. So this is going to come in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is trace it on contact paper first. And then I've got a piece of uh, construction paper, um, stock cardstock type paper that I'm going to make the whole pattern on and tape it on and kind of see what I think about it. Uh, when I cut this section here out, it's going to allow these side pieces to be... I didn't resin over them as much as I did the nose cone because I want them to be a little bit flexible because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick them that way and let them overlap just a little bit to make the butt of it just kind of kind of come together. So that's the plan. I'm going to trace this with contact paper, trace it on, or transfer that to the red construction paper I've got set up over there and we'll put that back on with some tape and kind of see where we're at before we cut it out make sure all right so it's getting pretty dark and uh, this is kind of one of those you have to use your imagination I guess so I chose a dark paper just so I could kind of contrast that and kind of see what we're gonna have if it's cut out I don't know. The sides might be a little too low. They decide to bring those up just a little bit. 
Mm. I don't know. It's so hard to tell. Plus, that's going to come in some, too, so... You know, once that comes in, you're going to lose some of that height. And that's going to be a pretty wide opening. So, I may bring that up just a little bit. Instead of coming down that low. Bring it up. Maybe just about right there. So, five inches or so up from that. Yeah, I'm thinking that's maybe too low. It's so hard to tell when you haven't actually cut it. And I can always glass it back in if I mess it up, but I'd really prefer not to do that. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe. Like, oops. Coming up maybe like this. Oops. Get my fin to clock right here. <laughs> if I cut out <clears throat> too little, I can always cut out more. What is it they say? Cut it off twice and it's still too short? that line so that's this one's out and this one's out I'm liking that better yeah let's go with that let's let's cut let's take our cardboard here now that we've got something to kind of work with I can follow that to that same corner Again, if you recall, that bike's kind of that swooping line. So if we can kind of be in keeping with that, I think that would be good. So let's cut that out, flip it to the other side because there's no markings on the other side, and see what that looks like. So I'm liking that a lot better. Uh, I think the width up top up here is more in keeping with what I kind of had in mind. Uh, I wanted this nose cone to stay pretty much intact and I, I like this has a taller side almost like a door uh, I'm liking that that cut and I'm not gonna get too crazy back here I, I don't really know how flexible this is gonna be once it's cut apart um, some of the some of what's gonna happen is this center ridge cap when it's cut and I flex those sides in, I think is gonna I think it's gonna pop up a little bit, which I, I'm okay with that. I don't mind if it does that. So, you know, make it a little more kind of coned at the top. So, yeah, I'm thinking that's good. I like that. Wish I wouldn't have had to use the blue tape to keep everything kind of held down during the. 25 mile an hour winds yesterday. It's kind of annoying that that's in there. Uh, and there, there's some some uh, novice fiberglassing issues in it, but really that's not going to show. Um, this will go down on the bottom of the sidecar. I'm planning on putting a little copper decorative strip all the way around it. Uh, just hammer in. I'm going to cut. A little bit of copper sheeting and just go all the way around it. Uh, I may actually get the stuff that they use for hangers. You can buy it on the roll and it's not really copper. It's copper plated zinc or nickel or something. So contractors use it to pretty up any copper line they've put in. So I may just go get pipe strap and that it, the holes are already pre-drilled in there and then I can just go along the bottom and put my screws in or rivets or whatever it is I decide to do 
I, I think I want to make it removable just in case we need to take it off, so I probably won't put rivets in it, but they do make some really beautiful copper rivets. Uh, I even considered putting snaps, uh, but I think I want something a little more permanent maybe than a snap, uh, because I'm thinking about doing snaps up here on the top uh, for a little cockpit cover, either there or doing one here that has a, a shade that comes up. And of course we'll have a windshield on it too, I think. Maybe not for this first go around, but eventually. So it's getting dark. Um, I'm going to marker that on there where that goes, and then I'm going to take some acetone and wipe off this marker I have over here so I don't get confused, and flip that piece of paper over and make uh, that line all the way around. And we'll take a look at that and, and see what we get, but I think I think that's more along the lines of what I want. And I definitely, this, this hump that's here and on the other side, I want to bend it in enough, I think, to get rid of those. So we're probably going to end up uh, cutting out a little bit more of that, or hiding it behind something when I tuck it in, because I wish this canoe hadn't had those. But And if I had it to do over again, I definitely would recommend the wax paper, but it 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 is what caused this ripple I've got here that I'm going to have to do a little body work on. And it's actually, it looks worse. You really can't feel it. The only one you can feel is right there. Um, and I don't have any on this side. But the wax paper got rip bubbled under there, and I didn't realize it until the fiberglass had already set up, and then it had already created my ripple. So if I didn't if I wanted to sand the whole thing down right there, I could and get it out, but I'm just going to go with it and putty it. It's going to get painted anyway, so it's not going to matter. But I would probably do, if I had to do again, was would do like some kind of, I don't know, petroleum jelly, or I, I would do some kind of treatment. I don't know what would repel uh, fiberglass resin, if anybody has any ideas. Uh, WD-40, something like that. I don't know coat the whole canoe because this the the wax paper actually just it comes off real easily off of the back side of that I mean it just it peeled off beautifully you know and on the back of the resin can it tells you don't use a wax uh, cup and I actually taped two of the smaller brushes together the last time I put the resin on to give me a, a bigger area because I didn't have any more of the kind of intermediate two inch size of those cheap Harbor Freight brushes. So I taped two of those together and by the time I got all the way over here uh, the resin had pretty much eaten, stretched, uh, created a chemical reaction with my tape and so electrical tape I knew wasn't good to use but I figured it would get me through and it did. It got me through enough to to get done what I needed to get done. So yeah I'm gonna go ahead and, and draw this line all the way across so we know where to cut there and I'll draw it on this side. We'll get this traced, get this one flipped and traced on this side, get this line taken off and get that all cut. And then I'll pop the camera back on and we'll probably be in the garage at that point because it's going to be pretty dark out here or I'll have to bring the lights up out in the carport. So that's where we're at all in a day's work, right?